can. Oh, great. You got the recording going. <laughs> Super. Um, so, so there's a field day called, they say it's not really a contest. It sort of is a contest. So if you're used to operating contests, field day is just another one. Winter field day is just another one. There's QSO parties. There's the Prairie QSO party that's just started up in the last couple of years. I've been doing the Quebec QSO party remote from Alberta, which is allowed, but um, uh, first place two years in a row from Alberta. <laughs> Radio amateurs of Quebec, I told them to send the plaque to Alberta. I think they, they sent it. So, and, and just to get some general on air experience, like if you're shy, all you have to say is pipeline Alberta, and you're gone. <laughs> you don't have to get into a whole conversation. So it's a quick way to make some easy contacts. Next slide. So a couple of things you should know. You should know a few basic Q codes. You don't, you shouldn't be saying these a whole lot, but uh, oh, we get a chart. Yeah. So yeah. typically, yeah. a QSO is a contact, right? QSL. It's a card, but it's also people use it for saying yes, basically an acknowledgement. QRZ, who's calling me? You got all these people calling me. You can't get a single call sign, just say QRZ, they'll all come back again at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide. Okay, so what happens during a contest? So you'll hear some people are gonna be calling CQ. And other people, they're just going to be scanning the band and answering. So if you're calling CQ, that's sort of called running. You're running stations. If you're answering CQs, you're sort of searching and pouncing on the stations that you find. So those are the two basic modes. Now, most people would like to get on a frequency, call CQ, and just stay there for the whole 24, 48 hours. That doesn't often happen. Uh, Conditions change, the rate goes down. Uh, you have to go and search and look for other stations. Um, what, what happens in this contact is it could be a traditional type QSO where you're giving a signal report and some other bit of information. Um, it's not the same requirement as a usual contact for a valid let's say a valid DX contact or a valid DXCC contact or whatever. The contest organizers define what it is you have to tell the other person in the exchange. So it might just be a signal report and your name. It might be your name and your state or province. Uh, some of the contests get a bit weird, like sweepstakes, you got like five things to say. It's a takes a long time. It's like the year you were licensed, a contact number, uh, what section you're in, they can't even remember the other one, but it takes a while to give those longer exchanges. Uh, serial numbers are quite often one of the exchanges. So if I contact you, your number one, I get you, your number two, number three, number four, number five, and you just keep giving that contact number out to the other station. And they'll be doing the same thing back to you. I gave you number five, he gave me number seven back. So I record that. So the easiest ones uh, on voice, typically five nine, everybody's five nine, even if you can't hear them. If it's five nine, you don't want to try, you try and get this bit of information, you don't really need. So everybody's five nine and <laughs> You tell them where you are, say you're Alberta. So don't say Alberta. Like you say Alberta to an American, and you go, Alberta, is that A L? And you go, because what they're trying to do is log their postal applications in the logging program. So Alberta's abbreviation is A B. Don't even say A B. Say Alpha Bravo. So why am I Alpha Bravo? Next slide. How do you find a contest? Okay, I've got a question. Yes, question. Do you have to use one of those logging programs to record? 
You don't have to, you can do it on paper, but I've done paper logging and I will never go back after using the program. In the old days, you used to have to have a, a log sheet and then you'd have a separate spreadsheet, let's call it paper spreadsheet, which was a duplicate sheet. So if I already talked to you, the rule says I can only talk to you once on this band. So I would log DE6 ABC, I write that in my log. And over on my doom sheet, I'm writing DE6 ABC under the DE category. And then the next time I hear somebody, oh, you call me again. You forget that you've worked with me. I love, oh no, DE6 ABC, I've already talked to you, I can't talk to you. Imagine doing all this on paper. You don't want to do that. As far as logs, is there about freely available software? That Yes. Is what's the best choice? For yep. Uh, we're going to give an example of a free software that we use here at the club called N1MM. And we'll be going over that as well. You can download it for free. This is your number of your books. N3FJP. There's quite a number. I'm biased towards N1MM, so we're going to do that demo. And that QR code should be active if, if you can screen it. These slides will be on, uh, will be posted on the website, but that will take you to to the website. So for the contest. Yeah, so the question was, how do we find out about the contest? So if you turn your radio on and you hear all these guys giving these numbers, it's pretty much there's a contest on. Now, which contest is it? How do you find that? There's contesting.com website. There's a calendar on there with all the contests you could possibly want. Weekly, monthly, annually, every contest that I know of is listed in there. So you can go there, and if you want to plan to be in a contest, you can figure out when it is, look it up on the calendar, um, if you want to look at the rules, I think we need to go to the next slide. Uh, yeah, we do these two. So, so what you want to do is, you hear all these people calling CQ. They're calling CQ. You, you want to tell them what what they, what do they want with you? So you look in the rules under the exchange category, and it'll tell you what the exchange is. So in this case, South Carolina QSO party. All you have to say is they're going to be giving you a 5-9 in their county in South Carolina, like whatever that county name is, and probably an abbreviation. If the county is, um, I don't know, say if we're doing Mercedes, it'll be M-E-R. If they're in Anderson, it would be A-N or A-N-D. So you'll, you'll want to know what these things are that you're exchanging with them. Now, they're in the South Carolina QSO part. So mainly there's people from South Carolina competing against each other. If you're outside of South Carolina, you have to give them a different exchange. 5-9 plus your state or province or DX if you're in some foreign country. So for us, everybody would be 5-9 Alpha Bravo in that particular contest. Other contests may ask for the serial number, your age, province, sex, who knows, whatever contest it is. Right now there's a, a young ladies contest on, so um, there's, you'll hear female operators calling CQOM, meaning old man. <laughs> traditional name for hands. Um, and then if you're a male you're calling CQ, you'd be calling CQYL for young lady. Notice how the men are old, <laughs> the, age, the ladies are young. <laughs> I don't know, it's part of ham radio. No, so, uh, <laughs> but what's important is figure out what the exchange is before the contest, because you don't want to answer somebody he says five nine uh, minimum, and you go, uh, gee, I don't really know what contest this is. Um, what what am I? What do you need? And the guy has to say, well, I need your 
signal report and your province. And by that time, you could have worked five stations, right? So a courtesy to the other people, <coughs> know what your exchange is before going in. And example, in the VHF contest in Calgary, uh, Maidenhead Grid Square is the exchange. So Calgary has four squares. You know, 31, 21, 20, and whatever the other one is, or 30. So whatever quadrant of the city you're in, know that before you get on. And then we won't have to ask you what quadrant you're in. You'll know what the exchange is. Okay, so I think that's sort of where do I find it? What's the exchange? And transfer. Now we ask you a question about logging software. Oh, that's okay. I mean, not need it. So again, the QR code is active. It'll take you to a website that lists uh, a lot of different logging software that's available. And there's there's a lot of them there. They all do more or less the same thing. The the key is that they generate results in particular formats because when you submit your log to the contest organizers that have to be in a particular format. And the format are Cabrillo, if that's what they're called, Cabrillo, or Amateur Data Interchange Format, ADI, or ADIF. So the software has to be able to generate the data in that format so that you can upload it to the contest organizers. So how does the software work? Well, you have to download it to your computer. So now you need a computer. So you've got your station and you've got a computer and they have to talk to each other. So you need a data cable. Uh, you download the software onto your computer and when, uh, once you've installed it, it's there and it's running. You find out which contest you want to operate in and you download it, what's called a template or a user defined configuration. And what that does is it says, okay, you're operating in South Carolina QSO party. It needs this particular information, so it tailors the entry windows to that contest. Okay, but you only install the software one time. So the way the communication works between the computer and the software, it's almost always from the radio to the com to the computer. There's a couple of exceptions. So in order to make what's called a valid or a good contest QSO, you need some pieces of, inform of information. Of course, you need your call sign, you need the other station's call sign, you need date and time, frequency, mode, and then the signal report in the contest exchange. So when you download the software, you tell it who you are, where you are. You say VE6 NRO, uh, and you configure it with the band plans that you're operating in. So it will know that when you're operating on 20 meters, this is the limit, the, the, these are the frequencies. So that when you tune your radio to that frequency, the software knows that, well, I'm expecting information and, or I'm expecting you to be operating in either side band or CW mode, okay? Um, Right, so as Mike said, we use N1MM, or sometimes it's called N1MM Plus, and that's what we use downstairs in the station. A lot of us use that, so that's the one that, that we're featuring. Just out of curiosity, does anybody know what N1MM stands for? Yeah, I know you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a call sign of the, of the principal developer, so. So that's how you build your legacy to develop software. <laughs> and he's a contester. Sometimes he's he will call cool. you. Well, well that's cool. cool. It's really cool. Yeah. yeah. I think I would probably turn the radio off with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So here is an example of what N1MF screen might look like. And for those of you who are new to contesting or maybe just tried once or twice, it seems overwhelming. There's all these windows. Where do I look? What do I do? What's happening? So this is a very simple setup. I know those of you who are more experienced are going, there aren't enough windows there. Um, this is mine from the ARRL 10 meter contest last fall. This is just, I, I did a screenshot. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little tour of the windows here. It's configurable. You set it up the way that you want. I'm just highlighting some of the key features on here, okay? So the first one, there's a map of the world and it shows daytime and nighttime. As an amateur radio operator, why do I care about that? 
Gray line. Gray line. Oh, you have to grab the head. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, propagation, right? Uh, propagation in the daytime means certain bands are better. Propagation in the nighttime means, you know, different bands. And the gray line, who doesn't know what gray line means in this context? That's, yeah, excellent. Okay, so guess what the line designating night and day is called? Gray line. Gray line. Wow, okay, that's a good question. <laughs> what it means is that those places that are in nighttime, they're about, and the, and the sun is starting to rise, now the atmosphere is getting energized, and that maybe presents some opportunities for propagation. So that's why gray line is very interesting and very informative. Same contest next weekend that we're hoping you'll come out and check out. It's mostly North America, but the big contest in March is a worldwide contest. So gray line will be very important. Who, who can I go track now? Okay. Over here on the left hand side, I've got my band map or frequency range. And as I said, when you install the software, you tell it what type of radio you have, what's my location. And you also configure it. You say, well, I'm in Canada, so my 20 meter uh, band goes from what frequency to what frequency? No, nobody wants to look at me, okay? <laughs> yeah. So you just, you just program for those frequencies so that the software knows when you're operating in that band. So most of the information from uh, when you're contesting, when you're using N1MM, goes from the radio to the software. This is one exception where it goes the other way because this is an active window. I haven't shown it on here, but you can activate something called DX clusters or spotting software, if you call it. And what that will do is those who enact themselves will, their call signs will be displayed here. So let's say there's an exotic station or some particular station that you're interested in and they show up on here. If you click on that with your mouse, it will QSY. What does QSY mean? Move. Right. Thank you, go, right? Okay. Okay, so that's an active window. You don't have to use it, but it's available so that you can click on that and now your radio will change to that frequency. Click on the frequency or click on the call. When you click yes. on the call, will it know this call in your log? That I don't know. Um, will it? Yes, yeah. Yes. No, you really quick, but, but do you have to? It'll log, if you click on a call, the oh, call. Okay, but you don't have to do anything specific for that. Okay, I learned something. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And you can just click on the frequency, it'll just go to that frequency, right? As far as I know, yeah. And it'll also, what's that? Uh, if there's a call with so the If there is, yeah. Check to make sure that it's the one. Yeah, because sometimes you get a big pile up on that frequency. Yeah, okay. Thanks. So, so in case you didn't hear the question, it says if you click on the call sign, it will put, it will put that call sign in the window. So, that's another way to get it very quickly. Okay. I use a different mouse software. So we have questions for you. Okay, so the other thing that's really nice about the logging software is it's keeping track of how many QSOs you're making, right? So you can see as you're going along how many QSOs have I made, what band, what mode, what countries, what entity, and on the right hand side it's telling me my current score because you've downloaded a template for the uh, contest. It knows what the raw points are, one point for each QSO, plus there are bonus points, and bonus points are called the multipliers. And uh, for example, if you work the same station in different bands, you'll get a multiplier. Your score increases for the different bands that you work. Um, yeah, same thing. The other thing is analytics. I don't know if that's really what it's called, but it will tell you your rate, how many QSOs you're making an hour, how long has it been since your last one. This is from last fall, so that I'm not slacking off. It's just it's just an old an old log. Really useful if you have more than one operator, because then you can compare, maybe challenge each other. But it's just another way to see it. Um, Vera, thank you very much. You did some really cool graphics from uh, Winter Field Day. It's in the latest issue of Key Clicks and. He did it by getting the raw data from uh, the logging software. Okay, next one, please. And this is where, this is how you interact with the software. So two windows here, and the bottom window is the one where you supply the other station's information. So there's a spot for call sign. There's a spot for sent and received signal report, which is always 5-9, doesn't matter, but there's still a spot. And then the exchange on the far right-hand side. 
So that's, if you do nothing else, this is where you have to supply the information to the software. And up top is a list of the contacts that you have entered into the program. That's what, those are the stations you've worked. Time, frequency, call sign, uh, uh, prefix, and, and points. Notice the red check marks? Okay, those of you who know, <laughs> don't say anything. What do the red check marks mean? What do you think they might mean? Well, yeah, it's a multiplier, right? So that means that for that station, maybe I worked him on another on another band, so I qualified qualify for a multiplier and I, I gained, and so red is good in this case. Okay, so this is this is the most important window. This is where you interact with the software. So in the exchange, does it yeah. keep track? You know, like that's like you know, I'm giving up. I'm giving you the other one thousand. Yeah, one thousand. Mm -hmm. The next one is the screen actually tell me my next one is one thousand and one. Yes. Or do I have to? Yeah, it does. So in the case of a serial number, where where the, it, it knows because you've downloaded the template for the contest, it knows that you're it's expecting serial numbers or whatever the exchange is, and it will prompt you for the next one. Yeah. All good so far? No questions? Very good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So after the contest, if you're just casually operating, you don't have to send your login. It's nice if you do, if you bother to download the software and you bother to make all these contacts. If you do send your login, it helps the organizer. Because what they do is they log everybody's logs in and then they cross check them. If I say I worked him at 607 and I'm not in his log, well, I don't get that point. Now, if you don't send the log in, if I say I worked him at 607 and you didn't send the log in, I still get the point. So it's, it's nice if you enter the contest to send in a log, but you don't have to, it's not a requirement. Yeah. Just a comment on sending in or not sending in. A few years ago, I was operating on a temporary operator's permit in the Philippines, and there happened to be a contest from Russia on, and I I wasn't really interested in it, but I did make three contacts in that contest, and I just put them in a notepad file in my phone, and about six weeks later, I got an email from the contest organizer in Russia saying, We've had people submit logs that said they contacted you. Could you confirm it? They said you can send us just a screenshot of uh, of your paper log. You can send us an Excel file. Any way that you put down that you contacted those three, can you confirm it for? It? So I just sent them the information from my notepad file back in a reply email, and they said, "Well, thanks very much. Confirmed." <laughs> So it is helpful, even if you don't want to participate as a contestant, you can send in your log and say, this is just for checking purposes. I'm just sending in a check log and they'll appreciate that as well. So check the contest rules, how to submit. Usually these days you go to someone's website, there's probably a form and you attach your Cabrillo output file from the program. So when you're done, when you're done the contest, it's like two buttons. Restore, it updates your score and recalculates all the multipliers and everything. And then export the two files, the Cabrillo file and the ADI file. And those are the files that you sort usually the Cabrillo file is the one you're going to send in to the contest organizer. Yeah. So getting back to technique, as I mentioned, you would love to just sit there and call CQ. So if you're if you're here downstairs and you're not calling CQ, there's something wrong. Okay, if you're sitting on a, a stack of antennas and a kilowatt or two, and you've got probably one of the better stations in Canada. You can sit there and call CQ all day and all night, and people will come back to you. If you're at home and you're living in a basement apartment with a dipole taped to your wall in the basement, probably calling CQ is not the best strategy because there's a limited number of people that are going to hear you. 
So in that case, you're going to be searching and pouncing on other stations. And you're going to be calling those loud guys. And if they've got all those antennas, they'll probably hear you. So those are the two extremes. If you've got an average station, a dipole, a long wire, or whatever, you're just as good as 90% of the people. So if you're motivated, call CQ. If you don't get answers, call longer CQs. Okay? At some point, you're going to figure out this is not worth calling CQ. So go to search and pound. So then you're looking for the typically the strongest station, the one that you think will hear you the best. So if the propagation is best to, I don't know, whoever's coming in the strongest, just look at your look at your spectrum scope, pick those strong stations. Chances are they're going to hear you and they're motivated to work you. More, more motivated than in a regular contest because who wants to work, you know, that guy at S3 when I can work a guy at S9. Well, in a contest, you want as many people as possible. So he's going to be listening for you. I find if you do that, you're just hunting, playing around for. So I find it later on in the contest because all the dudes there, all, you know, all they work everybody. If all you, they've never heard you, you're going to get a lot more, you know, replies. Yeah. That's what I find. And, and there is a strategy as well um, for working multipliers. So if you're busy calling, 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 there's all these multipliers and they're worth five, ten times as much as your individual contact. So typically, if you've been running on day one, about day two, all the big stations have already worked big pileups, and they're easier to get on the second day. So there's a strategy there, search for multipliers on the second day. <clears throat> um, Rob had a question. Well, it wasn't a question. I was just going to add on to what he said. And your points about calling CQ or searching and pouncing. If you find that you're, I mean, when you search and pounce and early in the contest, you're faced with pileups after pileups and you're wasting your time trying to, you know, break them and calling CQ. At least if you're calling CQ, the person that hears you, he's probably the only person hearing you. So you're not, you know, you don't uh, create a pileup. So it's just a matter of going through the different modes and don't be on the hidden chair and on the air all the time. So. Yeah, and, and pileup. So you'd like a big pileup, but you don't want a big, big pileup because if the pileup is too big, and I know this sounds counterintuitive, but if there's a hundred guys calling you, it's going to sound like Bush, and you get nothing, right? If there's 10 guys calling you, you can usually pick out a call sign or two or parts of a call sign. But you don't want the calls, you don't want the pileup to get too big. I know this is probably not a problem for most people, but if you're sitting downstairs here, don't call a long CQ because you get a hundred people and then they'll get frustrated and then they'll move somewhere else if they haven't gotten you. So try and manage the pileup. Um, and you want to be searching and pouncing if you're at a big station mainly just for multipliers and to sweep the band for all the big stations that you might not, because they're all, they're all sitting there calling CQ for the whole weekend. They may not get off those frequencies. So you want to at least work them before going to another band or before maybe putting out a CQ when things are slow. As you've had experience, do you get to know the likely stations that you're going to come across are some of them frequent flyers. Yeah, a lot of them, a lot of the contesters are frequent. And after a contest, you can upload all the call signs that you've worked to a common database that gets loaded into the N1MM program so that if you hear a partial call, let's see you hear XYZ, you just type in XYZ and it looks through all the XYZs in the database and it'll say it could be W1, W7, DE3. So then you've got sort of a prompt that could be one of these stations, which is helpful. But yeah, a lot of the contests, which you hear them all the time, you know them by name almost, and 
you know, there, there's sort of a camaraderie between contesters, I would say. I like almost everybody that was here by now. Uh, yeah, if, if you get to that point, that, that could happen. Yeah. So, uh, what are we doing? So, this is sort of a, tr a training session. We're going to have an on air practice session next weekend. No, February 24th. I guess it is next weekend. So, it's going to be the South Carolina Houston party, also the North Carolina. If you want to come back the next day. And all it is is 5-9 Alberta, so it's an easy exchange for us. And you can get on the air and practice. We'll, Nero and I are going to be there. I think mean, Rob's going to be there probably on Saturday. And we can help you um, navigate the station, do a station orientation, and on-air practice. So that's February 24, 25. What's your time that you're going to be early that night? Uh, I think it's 8 a.m. till what did we say? 7 p.m. Something like that. It's it, on on the uh, para events page. There's a sign up registration. It's got the dates and times only. I think it starts at 8 in the morning, but typically we give uh, shifts that are an hour long. Um, you can do half an hour, you can do an hour, you can do three hours. It depends how many people. We've got five or six stations, so there's usually a seat available. And what's on the next slide? That's you. That's me. Okay, so um, you're here because you're curious about contesting or you just wanted the hot dog, whatever. So we've talked about the software. Uh, Mike has talked about different uh, ways to operate uh, run mode versus search and pounce mode. But here we are, you're either at your station or you're downstairs, downloaded the software, you've got everything connected, you've checked the contest exchange, and you're ready to go. So here we go. What do you do first? Well, let's say we're operating in uh, run mode. And we didn't mention it. it's probably obvious. This is just for sideband. We're only talking about sideband here for voice, not CW. So, what does CQ mean? Oh, yeah. CQ. I'm seeking you. So you call CQ. It means come talk to me. I want to. I want to uh, make contact. So if you're just casual CQ, you just want to chit chat, shoot the breeze, rag you, whatever then you also call CQ. So it doesn't matter whether you're operating in a contest or not. CQ is CQ, it's the same. So when you're doing a run, you're finding a frequency and uh, you don't hear anybody there. Can you call CQ right away? No. Nope. Should you call CQ right away? No. Nope. Because there might be a part of a conversation going on and you don't hear both sides of it. Okay. So the sequence is you listen, listen a little more, listen just a little bit longer. Okay, how long is that? I don't know how long is a piece of screen, right? Just enough that you, you're pretty sure that if there was a conversation, you would have you would have heard it, right? Okay, can you call CQ now? No. Nope. No. Next thing you do is this frequency clear? Okay, so you're just checking all the boxes. Okay, I've done everything I can to make sure I'm not walking on top of everybody. Okay, nobody responds. This frequency is clear. Now you call CQ. So if you look in books and ARL and, and RAC and they'll say, okay, you call CQ three times and give your call sign and say CQ again. It's kind of a personal preference thing, but what uh, we're suggesting you say CQ two or three times, give the call sign at the station. And I would say that you're operating in a contest because otherwise, you know, everybody will talk to you and you specifically want to talk to people in the contest. The chit chatters is like maybe another time. Okay, so I've done everything. I've checked. It's clear, and I'm going to call CQ now. So an example of that would be CQ, CQ, CQ. Victor Echo Six, November Romeo Oscar, South Carolina QSO party, VE Six NRO. So I end with the call sign, so that anybody who's listening is like, oh, wait a minute, somebody's calling CQ. Call sign NRO. Let's go. Okay. So if nobody comes back to you right away, don't worry about it. It's not personal, you know, maybe they're turning their antenna around, maybe they're not sure they heard you, call again. Didn't hear anything, call again. Okay, how long do you keep doing that? Okay, until you get a reply. 
Um, and that's that's just experience and maybe your own comfort, maybe you just want to try something else. Um, personally, when I the first couple of times I contest, I only did that two or three times. And then I came and watched the experts. It's like you just sit there and you call CQ, CQ, CQ. And once people start coming to you, especially if you're operating from a big station, then you'll get even more people. If you, it, it's a, a preference thing, it's, you, it's something you get with experience. How long do you wait until you don't get an answer? So if you decide you want to move on, you've got to repeat the process, right? You've got to find a clear frequency and then start the process again. But hopefully, once you call CQ, someone will respond and you'll start working with QSOs. Okay. Ready? Okay. So, you decided you're going to work in a contest. This is the off air practice. Next weekend is the on air practice. So what we'd like to do is to go through a couple of examples here of what it might be in a contest. So um, what I've, I've given, I've handed out some log sheets. Um, you don't have to put time and date. What we're going to do is we're going to call out and use your own call sign when you're calling out, when you're responding to a CQ. And use the exchange. I handed out some exchanges. Did everybody who's playing get an exchange? If you didn't get one, just use five nine alpha bravo. Okay. So the way it's going to work is I've got everything I need to do to make sure I have a clear frequency. I'm going to call CQ. Everybody answers with a call sign. We're going to have a pile up. Just your call sign, and I'm going to respond to a person. Okay. That person. We're not going to have a, a, an exchange. We're going to exchange information, right? So a word about how we do that. So you could do it just by saying, okay, I got your call sign. Go ahead. Give me your information back and forth and back and forth. That's not very efficient, right? You're already in a contest. You know what the exchange is. So when you come back to me or when you answer, when I acknowledge your call sign, you could just give me your exchange. Is that clear? Yeah, understood. Maybe, yes. Why don't we do one just because you yeah. screwed? Okay, so I made sure everything that I made sure I have a clear frequency. I'm gonna call CQ and I'm gonna do it as if it's a Carolina QSO party operating from here. Okay. CQ, 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 Victor Echo 6, Alpha Oscar, South Carolina QSO party, Victor Echo 6, Alpha Oscar. B6 Tango Charlie. B6 Tango Charlie, 59 Alpha Bravo. 59 L A M C. Thank you, 7-3, Victor Echo 6, Alpha Oscar. Okay, yep. Mike, when you had fun, you didn't have fun to call if it's good practice to went from No, I make sure. I, I know her call, She's she said she's BE6AO. She's, she's told me she knows my call, BE6TC. You don't have to confirm it. Let's try one where you didn't get it, just okay. as a difference. Okay, yeah. CQ, 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 Victor Echo 6, Alpha Oscar, South Carolina, QSO party, Victor Echo 6, Alpha Oscar. Victor Echo 6, Tango Charlie, 59, Alpha Bravo. 59, LACT. Thank you, Victor Echo 6, Alpha Oscar. Okay. What's LACT? I don't know. <laughs> So you could write it down, you could say, Victor, I'm six times with our go ahead, and you would we go back and forth like that, we eventually get the information. If you're going for speed, trying to get the thing. Be comfortable though. If you're not comfortable getting all that information, you don't do it at your pace. Make sure you get the information because if you try to go back, you may never get it back, right? So generally I found operators will match your speed. If you're just you know really fast, they'll be really fast too. If you can speak normally, they'll match your speed as well. Okay. Um use phonetics, please use phonetics, okay? You're going to encounter all kinds of interesting versions of the phonetic alphabet. Just be flexible with them. Kilo, I said P is kilowatts. That is not K. That is two words. That is kilo and watt. Yeah, um, that's kilo. 
Now you know, it's like I don't care. I have one guy yelling at me once and I can't go to the Okay. So do you normally respond with whatever they use? No. No. I do not. But sometimes it's bad if you if you have multiple syllable uh uh phonetics, right? Remember Romeo, right? Sometimes it's nice to find a word that's the fewer syllables, but, but it's okay. Just, just make sure you phonetics will always make sure that you get the call sign right. Okay. Well, what if you go again saying I didn't understand your call sign? So uh, QSL, if you would use QSL. Many Q codes are statements or questions, and yeah. QSL is one of them. So for example, you are good. Oh, no, QR, sorry, QRZ is, yes, I, I didn't understand. Sorry, I think, yeah, QRZ. Okay. But QSL is confirmation or receipt. You can also use QSL. You can say, Victor Ever 6, Alpha Charlie, uh, Fox Track, QSL. Pardon? Oh, Victor Ever 6, Alpha Charlie, Fox You say QSL, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, but if I didn't, so for example, when he said VD6, I said Victor Ever 6, uh, QRZ, meaning I hear all of that. You know, there was something there, so I'll come back again. So the other thing I ended, I responded with it and ended with my call sign again. You don't have to say your call sign every time when you're acknowledging that. So because everybody's already heard your call sign, you can just say QRZ, meaning I'm finished with this contact. Let's go to the next one. Who's, who's available? Not, not giving your call sign often helps you with uh, managing file ups. Yes. If you're not yes. giving your call sign, people that call you should know your call sign. Yes. So only those that have been listening for a while know. Know your call sign. Exactly. Yes. I have to wait. 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 Every third or fourth contact, give your call sign, you know, because especially if you're working on pile up, because they won't know how to have it. And read the rules because some some contests require you to give your con your call sign at least every three contacts. So keep that in mind. If that's a rule, then give your call sign every three contacts. Yes. And there's some observers that would call you out if you were if you, you know if you were the when in the top two that they're trying to decide who's the winner. Yeah, yeah. You want to obey the rules. Is the bottom line. But don't be intimidated by by the contest exchange. Everybody learns, but you just gotta try it. Okay, ready to try it? I don't know if it's gonna work. I don't know. We'll try that. Okay, we're in the Carolinas QSO party. I have a mic in my hands. Okay, I'm gonna call CQ. Okay, this is not the time for QRM, but I had it out QRM split. Okay. So I'm gonna call CQ and you respond and whoever I think to respond will exchange information and then that person will call CQ. Yeah. You want us to use our own? Use your or own you want call, to use use your own call sign. Basis. That's yeah, use your own call sign and then uh, if I didn't give you the exchange for QRM, then just use 59 Alpha Bravo. You pick something for the exchange. Just just for the Okay, are we ready? So I've done the preliminary, I've made sure frequency is clear, blah, 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 I'm going to call CQ. CQ, 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 Victor Echo 6, Alpha Oscar, South Carolina QSO party, Victor Echo 6, Alpha Oscar. Victor Echo 6, Alpha Carolina Oscar. Victor in your own. Thank you, Victor Echo Six Alpha Oscar. Okay, so you get to call CQ now. Oh, I didn't hear that. <laughs> we'll do that a few more times. CQ Victor Echo 6 Alpha Oscar. 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 Victor Echo 6 Alpha Oscar.
CQ, 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 BP6 Tango Charlie contest. Victory April 6, Alpha Charlie Fox. BP6 Alpha Charlie Fox, 59 Alpha Bravo. 59 uh, Alpha Bravo. Roger. Your turn. You call CQ. Oh. <laughs> CQ, uh, CQ, CQ contest, CQ contest. Victory April 6, Alpha Charlie Fox drop. <laughs> you are it. <laughs> Victor Echo Six, Charlie Charlie Lima, five nine uh, Alpha Bravo. Oh. Victor Echo Six, Charlie Charlie Lima. Sorry, I didn't get your name on a call sign written into the log. Victor Echo 6, South Charlie Fox truck. Victor Echo QSL. Victor Echo 6, Alpha Pilot, Charlie Fox, we have the 6, Charlie, Charlie Lima. You're 5'9, Alpha Bravo. You're 5'9, Alpha Bravo. Okay. So, what happened there was I was going to be doing this TQ, but he didn't get his call sign. So, he said, whoa, 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 wait, I need your call sign again. So that's what happens, okay? So until you get the call sign, don't proceed. Okay. You and me have the one. No, what? I'm lost. So I'm okay. Okay. We're a little lost. Wait, what? Basically, here's one thing. You know, we went local and we went to the diet. You have to figure out what you have to do. You're almost everybody else in the world. Maybe the ones who got us here. Now you're jumping around the big people. Uh, okay. Maybe you should just run because uh, okay. our contest where that's the rule. Uh, okay. But okay. then this contest where well, well, you're the running on okay. okay. That reason I don't want to understand is that you know the first okay. pile up bar, what yeah. what's the next thing? Like who do you tell to go next? Okay. 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 So All right, so let's try that one then. So I okay, I'll call CQ and then we'll we'll go from there. Victor Echo, oh, sorry, CQ, 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 Victor Echo Six, Alpha Oscar, South Carolina, QSO Party, Victor Echo Six, Alpha Oscar. Delta, Delta, Echo, Oscar. Delta Echo Nine station, go ahead. Delta Echo Nine Hotel Charlie five nine yes. The five nine Alpha Bravo to you. Thank you, Victor Echo Six, Alpha Oscar. Victor Echo 6, Alpha Charlie Fox. QRZ? Whiskey Tango Yankee. Whiskey Tango Yankee Station, go ahead. Make sure you call to Whiskey Tango Yankee. You get 590 in November. Sorry, you call sign one more time. Victor Uniform 2, Whiskey Tango Yankee. Victor Uniform 2, Whiskey Tango Yankee, 59 Alpha Bravo. You're 590 in November. Thank you, 73, Victor Echo 6, Alpha Oscar. QRZ? Victor Echo 6, Tango Storm. Uh, QRZ, Victor Echo 6 Station. Victor Echo 6, one more time. Victor Echo 6 Station, one more time, please. Victor Echo 6, Tango Charlie. Victor Echo 6, Tango Charlie, thank you. 59 Alabama. 59 Alabama. <laughs> thank you for Alabama. Who are that? Victor Echo 6, Alpha Charlie Fox Drop. Victor Echo 6, Alpha Charlie Fox Drop. 59 Alpha Bravo. 59 Alpha Bravo. Thank you, Victor Echo 6, Alpha Oscar. Does make sense? Run with that? Okay. <laughs> Did that make more sense? Yes, we have a sign order. No. Come next weekend. Yeah. Or may not in this session. So that was an example of a run. So I found the frequency. I did my preliminary. How can I make sure nobody that I wasn't interfering with anybody? I called CQ when people responded. And I just picked them up. So I can continue to do that and continue to stay there until either nobody uh, responds to me or I'm tired and I've got a little break of some sort uh, and then repeat the process. So I just want to talk a little bit about interference uh, or as we could call it challenges. Um, different phonetic alphabets. <laughs> well, that's okay. That, that's no problem. Uh, every now and then you'll get someone who'll say, hey, we got a net here every week, you, you need to move. And it's like, well, you know what, maybe you could move too. It's, 
it's a, it's a negotiation. Okay, nobody owns that frequency. You just have to figure it out. I had a couple of times when I was calling, uh, looking to find a clear frequency, nothing, nothing, nothing. And then I say, is this frequency you use? And somebody pops up, yes, it is. Maybe they were just reserving it for themselves for the contest. I don't know. Find a different frequency, okay? Um, phonetic alphabet. And uh, you'll get different stations, uh, different loudness or decibel levels, I guess. Sometimes the loud station just acknowledge them so that they're logged and you can get them out of the way, right? Um, every now and yeah, then, so if, if the contest is in a particular band, obviously you got to stay within the band plan. But how do you work that that narrow region that's available? You just go tweet the yeah. dial and they put on the one. Yeah, that's right. So, so the question, if you just in case nobody else heard it, is if, if the contest is for a particular band. How do you manage the frequencies, yeah. right? So the window that I showed, the screenshot that I showed you from N1 and M, that was from the 10 meter band. Yeah. So only contacts yeah. in the yeah. 10 meter frequency yeah. for my band. Yeah. That's right. So if you just go. Yeah, you know, that's right. 10, yeah, that's right. 10 meters. kilohertz at a time or something. And yeah, yeah. You can you you find a clear frequency. If you're deciding to do a run, you find a clear frequency. Listen, 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 yeah. and blah blah blah, and then you start calling the Q. Yeah. You can move on if you want, or you can stay there as long as you as long as you want as well. So you get sideband contests don't go into the CW portal. Yes. Oh yeah. Or digital. Or, or yeah. 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 No, I understand that. I just yeah. some some people forget that tweet in the uh, yeah. contest just get screened out for yes. taking out every yeah. frequency yeah. like that. Um, you can answer this later in your own. Uh, I need the concept of split operation explained. <laughs> so just like okay, let me try. I, you know, <laughs> I, I understand what it means. It's different you transmit and receive on different things, like a repeater, right? And so, so typically in a contest you would not do that. But expeditions, expeditions would do that so that they're not overwhelming their transmit frequency with other callers. So they'll be list let's say they're on. 14200, they're transmitting, I'm transmitting. And I'm saying up five, CQ, CQ, up five. So on 14205, I want you to transmit to me. I'm still listening on 200. You're still transmitting on 200. Transmit. Yeah, I'm still trans. sorry, I'm still transmitting on 200, but I'm listening on 205. You're listening on 200, transmitting on 205. So you push your split button, Get your second VFO on 205. Your other one is still on 200. I will hear you. You will hear me. We'll talk back and forth. And we're on two different frequencies. So that's quite common. And on some of the bigger expeditions, they'll be listening up 5 or 10 or 15. So 205, 210, 215, 15 KC could be cluttered up with people. The trick in order is to find out who he comes back to, who he last worked, what frequency they're on, who he go on that frequency for your transmit, where he's already listening, and then work him that way. So that's split operation, but not typically done during contests. Um, and the uh, exchange that I had with Vera, where I didn't get his call sign, right? So I kept asking, I kept asking him to repeat it. That's okay. There's, you know, it's, it, there's, there's nothing that says you have to get it the first time. Um, and if there's a particular station, sometimes you can tell me it's a child or someone, you know, for whatever reason you want to log that station, everybody's calling on top of that most people if you say hey i'm trying to log this station or you know i'm just trying to get this in the log most, most people will just back off and, and wait till you till you log it um does everybody know what a lid is in an amateur radio i don't know what it stands for but someone <laughs> i don't see you for newbies i think that's unfair because you we don't really know what's going on but a lid is someone who interferes either deliberately or or inadvertently, but the lids are far, far fewer than the than the good operators.
operators. So um, don't be intimidated by that. But uh, you know, try to get the contact. If, if, so, if there's interference of some sort, try and try and manage it by, by just saying, "Look, I'm trying to log this contact." Just an example, when you're listening and everything sounds clear, when you say it's frequency in use, and someone comes back and says, yes, it is, it could be they're hearing a DX station and you're not, and he doesn't want you talking on the DX station. That's why he says it's in use. <laughs> okay, so that's why it's important to, uh, to do that, to listen and then ask, is this frequency in use? So, okay. Any questions? Ready to operate in a concept? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, and, you know, as we said, this was meant to be an off air exercise just to tell you what's happening during a contest, give you some uh, information, and hopefully inspire you to come out next weekend. Um, preferably sign up for a shift to uh, work in the contest, or you can just come by and we'll uh, put you in the chair and try it out. Um, it's exposure to different ways of operating. It's kind of a classic form of operating the ham radio, and it's a lot of fun. You get to try, you get to make a lot of contacts on air. It's good experience. Um, so on the CARA page, you can register for the South Carolina or the Carolina QSO party next weekend. And that is on-air practice or coaching for the big contest coming up in March, which is the Worldwide Work Doll Prefix Contest. So the really cool thing about that is it's worldwide. So you'll hear all kinds of stations and um, pay attention to propagation and at the station you get to use different antennas and it's a <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I gotta say, one thing I like for contests is if you're not, you're not going to participate in the contest, if you want to fill a blog book or something, I find if you want to be the board of the contest, a lot of the DM stations are on the screen, they're not throwing this stuff. You can find a lot of their hands the day before. Okay. So I'm going to have to advise the same thing. Before people know, I can never see what Alan mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you have, uh, have you have a few announcements before people go? Well, uh, so next month meeting will be on antenna presented by Ben and so that will be. Um, we've got Pat as well doing the email me and the DNA. Uh, events coming up, um, as well as the contest, North Carolina contest next weekend. There will be the cookie race. Okay, now, how are we for volunteers for the cookie race? Now, they had to scale it back because of lack of snow. So, we're going to have snow over at the but I don't think it's going to be yet. So, we're good for numbers, but it's happening. Okay, all right. That's good to know. Um, the following week, we have the Cochrane Winter Brown. Uh, I think we still do need some volunteers for that one. If we get more than we need for somebody who's interested in getting into rallies, I will pair you with somebody who is more experienced. So don't be afraid to come out to the to participate in the Cochrane Winter Rally. We also have the Casino coming up soon. And I do believe we need a number of uh, positions filled there for that. And a bunch of our funding for our projects comes from working the casino. If we don't get enough volunteers, we can't do the casino and we lose out on the funds. So please consider that as well if you can. Yeah. So those are my announcements. Thank you for hot dogs. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't mind getting people that are not part of it myself. I've got enough on my plate, but I wouldn't mind getting some people like I'm going to